uh, you know, what philosophy, science books, health books, etc. are you interested in? Because I have a very big intellectual side. What's up guys, John Anthony here from John Anthony Lifestyle. Today I want to make a video about some of my favorite books that I've read. People are always asking me, uh, you know, what philosophy, science books, health books, etc. are you interested in? Because I have a very big intellectual side. Okay, I have a double bachelor's degree in computer science and philosophy. I have a double master's degree in human computer interaction, which is cognitive psychology applied to software and systems, as well as philosophy of cognitive science, which is looking at the nature of consciousness and concepts and this and that. But I used to be in math league and chess club and I worked on nuclear, biological and chemical missile defense for Lockheed Martin, which is a defense contractor for almost five years. I, work, I led a big team at IBM. I worked for Hewlett Packard and Sony as well and got fired from IBM, Sony and HP all for doing game. But I switched to the pickup field completely almost 10 years ago. So I wanted to go through kind of a, a short list of books I recommend as well as a summary of each one and you guys can go and take a look at those as you see fit, okay? Before we continue, please subscribe below if you have not already. Press the notification bell for alerts of new videos every single day. And if you would like to start packing out your schedule full of dates starting as soon as next week, okay, jump on a free 30 minute call with me. I'll show you how I can get you to a very advanced level very, very fast, okay? With the best system in the industry, hands down. Okay, jump on that free 30 minute call. I'll go through all the details of that. So, uh, the first book, that I would recommend is The Blind Watchmaker by Richard Dawkins, okay? The whole idea there, it's a nice summary of evolution, you know, all the concepts that are, that are in evolutionary theory. And the whole argument goes, this came from a guy named, I think, Roger Paley, where he said, if you were to find a watch on the ground, it's so complicated that you would assume it had a creator, okay? And this book carefully and systematically goes through how very small changes over millions of years can lead to these complex organisms and complex things going on and there's no need for a creator or a first cause. Okay, so that's number one. Uh, number two, for health and longevity purposes, um, there's a book called How Not to Die. The guy's last name is Gregor. How Not to Die. It's going to provide an overwhelming case for a plant-based diet and how to combat all the major degenerative diseases. Okay, also in the topic of life extension, uh, there's a book called Lifespan by David Sinclair. He's an anti-aging scientist from Harvard, and it's called Lifespan, Why We Age and Why We Don't Have To. He recommends three different compounds that you can take as supplements that are going to activate survival pathways, okay, and put your body into DNA repair mode. And these are, he goes through in the book how these come from uh, plants originally, and when there was like a huge uh, event on the earth where, where a lot of species were wiped out, the ones that had these special genes survived and they passed them on into animal species and into humans and we can activate those with certain compounds. Okay, so he recommends NMN, which is a precursor to NAD+. And by the way, I'll put links to these books and, and references in the description. So NMN, which gives rise to NAD+, he says take about a gram of that per day. Transresveratrol, which comes from uh, grape like the skin of grapes or something like this, um, you want to take 98% standardized transresveratrol, a gram a day, and then metformin, which modulates insulin so sensitivity with blood sugar. By the way, this, this is all, this isn't a formal medical advice as a disclaimer, this is just repeating concepts from their books. But I've done more research on the metformin stuff, and it's better to take berberis from what I've from what I've read, okay, it's more natural. It's also easier to get. Metformin is typically only given to people with type two diabetes by prescription only, okay? Moving right along, if you want to destroy the idea of a soul, the notion of a soul, an immaterial soul, Joseph Ledoux, the cognitive neuroscientist from, the neuroscientist from NYU, he wrote a book called The Synaptic Self, which makes a very strong case that what we are, or I am, is just my current synaptic configuration which changes in real time based on environmental factors and constrained by genetics. So if someone were to have a car accident or have some kind of uh, injury, injury or, or disease process that fucks a part of their head, Alzheimer's, dementia, etc., uh, very quickly that what makes up who that person is drastically changes and can become even unrecognizable, okay? So look up that and, and also then, you know, if, if you lose the idea of a soul or if you equate it to the idea of replacing functionally what, what a biological human is doing with a machine, just using different components instead of biological wetware, just using circuitry and this and that. And, and the machine were to fall off of a, 
you know, a high thing and shatter over the ground, you wouldn't think that it was going on to a better place, okay? And by the way, the ideas of heaven and hell come from before we realized what the solar system was, so people thought stars were just pockets into heaven and hell because we didn't understand volca volcanoes and there was magma in the earth. And so people saw this hellfire spewing and they thought that, that these were gods and now we have science that understands these things and we know it's not heaven and hell. Let's see, a very good book on consciousness is a book called The Universe, uh, Universe of Consciousness by I think Gerald Edelman and he's also from NYU. And that book really goes into how consciousness has been found to be synchronous, distributed neuronal firing. So, so those are the properties, it has to be synchronous and in distributed areas across the brain and also between like 20 and 60 nanometers of, of wavelength or something like this. That's what defines consciousness, okay? So it's, um, and there, I've seen computer models that have likened it similar to how RAM in a computer behaves, okay, in your long-term memory. Just like a hard drive in a computer is the hippocampus in your brain. But the point is, is that, you know, I, I think we're just the same as computers, okay? So when you when you learn about consciousness, it's really just like, it's just booting up and it's just synchronous. It's tying in all your perceptual categorization of the world that's coming in through your senses, as well as your motivational systems, your emotional systems, your behavioral systems, etc. So that's the book there on consciousness. Okay, next I would recommend a bl The Blank Slate, Modern Denial of Human Nature by the cognitive neuroscientist Steven Pinker. The famous philosopher John Locke, he thought that we had something called the tabula rosa, a blank slate. He thought that every person had equal propensities to be intelligent and creative and this and that. And Steven Pinker, with massive empirical support, argues quite the contrary. He says that most of our intelligence and personality is determined at birth by your genetics and doesn't move very much. So the fact that I just got the genetic luck of the draw to be hyperanalytical was really just that, luck in a lot of cases. That doesn't mean you can't max out your potential, but people are kind of predestined for different things. So like when I studied philosophy, the way Plato handled this when he talked about like a ruler society is that uh, you had like this allegory of the metals. So they would tell people, oh, you're bronze, you're meant to just be a farmer. Oh, you're gold, you're meant to be a ruler and this and that. That's how they, they uh, dealt with discrepancies and what people were uh, able to do potential wise. But he goes through in that book, The Blank Slate and shows how a lot of the stuff is genetic and not able to be learned through environmental things. And lastly, there's a bunch more I could recommend, but, but this is just kind of a short list. Also regarding the technological singularity, which is one of my favorite topics, you wanna look up Ray Kurzweil. He's now the director of engineering at Google, but I've been reading his books since high school. Okay, I graduated high school in 2001. I read his book, The Age of Spiritual Machines. The Singularity is Near is a more recent one. He wrote a book called How to Build a Mind. And Ray Kurzweil, he's invented over 100 different things. He's been held as the modern Thomas Edison, he's, he's really brilliant. He takes a million dollars worth of supplements and intravenous therapies. He has a full-time person that does all his pills. It's like you guys, you, you do my pills. But he claims to have frozen his biological age. He's still aging chronologically, numerically, but he, for all intents and purposes, and that's why a lot of you keep saying, oh, you look like Benjamin Button, like you're going backwards in, in age. I'm doing a very optimized and calculated food and supplement regimen in order to combat disease and aging processes. But his books about the singularity, the technological singularity, I think are some of the most important out there. That's one of my biggest interests. The whole idea is that technological, technological progress is increasing at a double exponential rate. That's held true since our earliest records of technology. And people mistakenly think it's linear progress. So people think the last 100 years of progress are going to be the same as the next 100 years, but it's really going to be 20,000 times greater. So we're coming up on the, the knee of the curve where things are starting to explode. And very quickly, it's going to just radically change the world in all kinds of different ways. Right? Elon Musk is very worried about these kinds of things. He put a post out on this forum called Edge or something like that that freaked a lot of people out and he deleted it. But he said, unless you have access to groups like DeepMind, which is Google's machine learning stuff, he says, you don't realize how fast the pace of artificial intelligence is growing exponentially. He said, the risk of something seriously dangerous happening is in the 10 year time or five year time frame, 10 years at most. And then he said, this is not a case of crying wolf about something I don't understand. So it's a very real concern and a very real danger that's, that's looming on the horizon. Basically what's going to happen is once super intelligent machines are able to surpass human intelligence, it's going to be a recursive self-improving phenomenon in a closed feedback loop without any need for human intervention. So it's going to be like a runaway phenomenon. It's for those of you who have seen like the Hollywood version, um, Transcendence with Johnny Depp. Basically the machine, the, the, the machine version of himself that plugs into the cloud just makes millions of dollars very quickly trading in the stock market and just starts like 
absorbing all human information, you know, all the information that's out on the internet instantly and synthesizing it all. And then it needs more power and it's, it's just going to be like this runaway phenomenon where I think the end result is going to be turning all computing substrate or turning all matter into computing substrate. And there's estimates about how quickly that can happen if you have to observe the speed of light or if you can surpass the speed of light using wormholes and about cold computation versus hot computation. And Kurzweil actually writes a foreword to a book called The Intelligent Universe where he kind of beautifully lays all that out in the beginning about how quickly these things can happen. But that's one of my biggest interest by far. Um, and lastly, I'll close, and I could keep going on and on, but I'll close with um, Frederick Nietzsche's book, Beyond Good and Evil, where he shows the mistaken moral systems and ethical systems that have been imposed by uh, Christianity, for instance, where they glorify weakness and, you know, being meek and all these things. Whereas instead, he encourages you to reject those values and embrace your own new values and create your own purpose instead of letting nihilism and existentialism defeat you and, and kind of, you know, being in despair, you turn it into an empowerment model. It's kind of like coming out of Plato's cave. The rest of society is still in the cave, held down by societal constructions and preconceived notions and stuff like this. And you are out of the cave, creating your own purpose and your own values. And that's how he says you can be truly the happiest possible. And that's how you can truly do extraordinary things with your life, okay? Because then you can try to like master, like I, I feel like I rose to the top of the game and I'm going to be starting a health and longevity company as well, where I'm maximizing protocols to minimize disease and maximize longevity. I, I wrote a 50 page paper about 15 years ago now that's how to reduce the major disease risk to close to 0% for $23 a month. Okay, if you have interest in, in taking a look at that, um, I'll put the link to that in the description as well. But I hope this is all useful. I have a lot to share intellectually. Um, I don't put that much of that stuff on the channel because people are interested in dating advice and watching other coaches get roasted. But um, there will be more of this to come. So thank you so much for watching. If you are not yet a subscriber, please subscribe below. And I hope you can see that all this intellectual knowledge and, and proficiency with analyzing things is exactly the reason why I was able to take this game so far and, and optimize every little piece of it. So if you want to learn my optimized system and get extremely good to the point where you're closing one to two new girls a week, very, very soon, and as little as next week or the week after, jump on a free 30 minute call with me. I'll show you how I can get you very good, very fast. And I will talk to you guys soon. Take care. Some do it for the income, but we do it for the outcome Some of us are active while others just let their mouth run No doubt, son, this is not just about fun We will not be outdone by these cowards who shout scum